Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Pastor Jim. I want to welcome you to our Attributes of God Bible Study. Uh, should you join us, uh, please press the microphone button on the app to mute yourself. And again, welcome. This week we're going to be looking at the omnipotence of God. This is the last of the three omnis. First we did the omni omniscience of God and the omnipresence of God. We're going to close out the omnis with the omnipotence of God. And again, we meet every Saturday morning. 9.30 Central Time right here on freeconferencecall.com. If you're unable to join us, you'll be able to see the class, uh, the session on our Facebook page as well as YouTube channel and the church's website. And if you have any questions, comments, uh, you can reach me at pastorjim.tcorc at gmail.com. And I'd like to open us up in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We are so grateful for this opportunity to gather together and study your word, study your attributes. Father, we look so forward to learning more about you because we know the more we learn about you, the better we understand who you are, what you are, how you are that our relationship with you will only strengthen. And it's my prayer, Father, that everybody watching now and later is deeply touched by the Holy Spirit, moved, and that they learn just a little bit more about you and your attributes, God. You are such an awesome God in this crazy world. We lean on you, Father Almighty, for guidance, safety, and health. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. <clears throat> so we're looking at the omnipotence of God. He is all-powerful. I'm going to repeat that. He is all-powerful. That is the very definition of omnipotent. If you remember uh, when we did the first omni, the Latin word omni means all, like the top, all. So God is all powerful. You, you break up the word omnipotent. You have omni, which means all, and then you have potent, which is strength. You know, you think when someone ever had uh, a strong medicine, their reaction was, wow, that was really potent. So again, omnipotence, all-powerful. And as always, we'd like to acknowledge that the written material for this study is from the Attributes of God Sermon and Teaching Series by Dr. Steve Lawson and One Passion Ministries. We greatly appreciate Dr. Lawson and One Passion Ministries for allowing us to use their material. Like all his attributes, God's omnipotence is coexistive with his being. Remember that, and I'll repeat it. Like all of his attributes, God's omnipotence is coexistive, extensive with his being. There is no area of the universe where he is not exerting his power from a blade of grass to the stars in the sky. Everything and everyone is dependent on him, uh, upon his immeasurable power for its existence. In this lesson, Dr. Lawson helps us to explore the nature and extent of this incomprehensible power. If you've been going through these lessons with us, hopefully you're gaining a, a much 
stronger understanding and appreciation of God's awesome attributes. It's like an endless, endless foundation that we're building here. We build each week as we look at another attribute. And each day we study God's Word. It's like your foundation with God is ever ever growing, ever building. Now for some scripture reading. There's a lot of scripture obviously referring to God's omnipotence. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 28 through 31. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to whom he has no might, he increases, increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. How awesome, how reassuring of a scripture is that. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, 21. Now to, him, to, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Psalm 33, 6. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their hosts. Matthew chapter 29, uh, chapter 19, verse 26. But Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all all things are possible. And that definitely deserves repeating. But Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. When you're going through a tough time, this is another perfect Bible verse for you. Jeremiah Chapter 32, 17. Ah, Lord God, it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. That's awesome. So awesome. Now on to what we hope to accomplish today, this morning. To show the extent of God's power. To commend worship of the one who controls all events at all times. To instill Humility by considering our frailty in light of God's limitless power. The fact that we are humbled, made frail in the light of his limitless power should have a comforting and convicting effect on us. Just like we've learned from all of God's other attributes that we've studied up to this point. God's attributes should have a comforting and convicting effect on all of us.
But however strong may be the purposes either of angels or of men, whether of good or bad, whether these purposes fall in with the will of God or run counter to it, the will of the omnipotent is never defeated. Awesome quote from Augustine of Hippo. We can do very little. God can do whatever he wills. We, beyond very narrow limits, must use means to accomplish our ends. With God, means are unnecessary. He wills and it's done. He said, let there be light and there was light. He by a volition created the heavens and earth. At the volition of Christ, the winds, the winds ceased, and there was a great calm. By an act of the will, he healed the sick, opened the eyes of the blind, and raised the dead. This simple idea of the omnipotence of God that he can do without effort and by a volition whatever he wills is the highest conceivable idea of power and is that which is clearly presented in scripture absolutely awesome quote by Charles Hodge right there you know the last sentence that he can do without effort and by a volition, whatever he wills is the highest conceivable idea of power. And it is that which is clearly presented in Scripture. Basically, he's saying, listen, God has the highest conceivable idea of power, and it's proven throughout Scripture. Some key points for today. Infinite power. God possesses all power. Let me repeat that. God possesses all power. All human power and ability ultimately belongs to God. Even Satan's power is allotted to him by God. And I want to repeat that. This is very important because this touches on something that we covered last week or the week before. Even Satan's power is allotted to him by God. Moreover, when God is present in all places, he is present in the fullness of his being. I want to repeat that one too because we're going to see that later on. Moreover, when God is present in all places, he is present in the fullness of his being. God's power is without limits or bounds. He has no means to carry out his every desire. Nothing is too difficult for God to accomplish. That is definitely worth repeating. And I want everybody, you know, say it with me. He has the means to carry out his every desire, not just a few, not one, not a couple, out his every desire. Nothing is too difficult for God to accomplish. Again, it doesn't say some things are too difficult. No, clear as day, nothing is too difficult for God to accomplish. And this helps us, this scripture helps us with that. Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? God is able to do what humans cannot. 
including the act of saving sinners. We have to remember that. God is able to do what humans cannot. And that includes the act of saving sinners. We are to witness people, but we ourselves do not have the power nor the authority to save sinners. We can help lead people to salvation, but we cannot save them ourselves. The knowledge that God can overcome all obstacles should encourage us to pray to him boldly and persistently. God's infinite power and the fact that he can overcome all obstacles should bring us tremendous comfort and joy. You think any time you have any type of obstacle, whether it's small or, or huge, the very fact, the knowledge, knowledge means you know it, you understand it, that God can overcome all obstacles should encourage you to pray to him boldly and persistently because you need help. And who do you turn to? The person, the, the being that can overcome all obstacles, not just a few, not a couple, not one, but all, A-L-L, -L, all. And with that said, we should go to him boldly, confidently, and persistently over and over whenever we need help, whenever we have an obstacle, we should pray to him boldly and persistently. <clears throat> Irresistible power. No one can thwart, resist, or undermine God's purposes. Job chapter 42, verse 2. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 27. For the Lord of hosts has purposed and who will annul it? Who will annul it? His hand is stretched out and who will turn it back? So no one can refuse, refuse God. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13. Also, henceforth, I am he. There is none who can deliver from my hand. I work, and who can turn it back? God does not have to struggle to bring about his will. God does not depend upon, depend upon human action to achieve his goals. And we kind of touched on that uh, in the second week when we looked at the aseity, the self-existence of God. If you remember, that means God depends on no one. He's self-existent. So right here, God does not depend upon human action to achieve his goals. He doesn't need us. He may use us to achieve his goals. In fact, he will use us to achieve many of his goals. But he doesn't need us. And we need to, we really need to understand that. I think today there's a lot of, dare I say, false teaching out there that will lead people to think that God needs us. And he doesn't. I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings. But he does not need us. The battle between God and Satan is not a stalemate or a tug of war. I, again, that goes back to a couple of weeks ago when we touched on the fact that many Christians fear Satan. And they give Satan way too much power. No, Satan is defeated. 
there is not a stalemate or tug of war going on between God and Satan and their power. God effortly prevails over human rebellion and satanic resistance. I think we all as Christians need to hear that statement today. In America today, in the world today. So I'm going to repeat that. God effortlessly prevails, meaning he wins without effort over human rebellion. And there's a lot of human rebellion going on in this country and the world. And satanic resistance. There's a lot of satanic things and forces going on, especially in this country. But God, we have to remember, God effortlessly prevails over that, over those satanic resistances. Inexhaustible power. God's power does not diminish over time. He never grows wear or tired. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. I'm 56. Okay, there's a lot of things I cannot do that I used to be able to do even 10, 20 years ago. I'm growing weary. It's a natural progression because we're human. But God, God's power does not diminish over time. It's the, he's, he's the same from the beginning, now, and in all his attributes. But today we're emphasizing the fact that his power is the same infinitely. Past, present, and future. So his power does not diminish over time, unlike us. Also, he never grows weary or tired. Think of when you do something you haven't done in a while, or even something you do all the time. At a certain point, you grow weary and tired. But that should be comforting to us as Christians to know that <laughs> you get. I mean, think about it. Our human mind tries to comprehend God and what He's doing everywhere at every moment. That just exhausts and wears out our brain trying to comprehend that. So now you flip that and you say, "Wow." with everything that God has done, is doing, will do, his power level, like a gas tank, never goes down at all. He's always at full, full strength. That should just absolutely blow your mind. But also at the same time, besides blowing your mind, it should give you comfort, ease, knowing that no matter what is going on, God never grows weary or tired, especially when we're going through tough times. That, that is so comforting, comforting and reassuring. Through his exhaustible energy, exhaustible energy, he gives strength to his people. That touches on what I just mentioned. Isaiah chapter 40, verses 29 through 31, carrying over from previous. He gives power to the faint, and to, to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings 
like eagles, and they shall run and not be weary. What a wonderful, I mean, all scripture is amazing and wonderful. But right there, Isaiah, even, you know, chapter 40, 28 through 31, you read that all together. That should really give you that pick up and go to pick yourself up after you've fallen, after someone's knocked you down. God's going to give you that strength to pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and keep going. Because you know God never grows weary or tired. Scripture assures believers that they can do all things through the strengthening power of Jesus Christ. And I'm pretty sure we all know this verse. You know, Norman Vincent Peale, uh, in his book, Power of Positive Thinking, said to repeat this verse like 13 times a day until it became a part of you. If you don't know it, you will definitely know it after today. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Or in some translations, I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. As we trust in Christ, he, exchange, he exchanges our weakness for his strength. So you don't have to rely on your strength. It's not going to work. But Christ, he, he takes your weakness and replaces it with his strength. God's in, in, uh, inexhaustible strength empowers us to carry out what he calls us to do. So again, whatever he's called us to do, when we're slacking, when we're feeling like, oh Lord, I just I can't do this. His inexhaustible strength empowers us. We, we should know. We need to pray and read scripture and remember that his inexhaustible power strengthens us, empowers us to carry out his, what he's called us to do. Incomprehensible power. God's power is so far beyond human capabilities that we simply cannot understand about it or understand it. When you think about it, that is why he is the almighty God. All of his attributes are beyond our human capabilities and comprehension. Again, that's why he's God Almighty, because all his attributes and all his sub-attributes, however you phrase them, when you try and sit there intellectually, casually, fully understand his attributes, you can't, because he's God Almighty. He is so far infinitely greater than us in everything to where we cannot comprehend it. That's why we need scripture. That's why we need prayer. God is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 now to who now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us i'm sure even myself prior to becoming a christian and when i was a quote unquote baby christian I probably, and you may have as well, thought, 
oh, I'm asking, I'm asking too much of God. I'm bothering him. Or it's too small of a problem, a request. Or on the other side of the coin, maybe you thought, oh, this is too big for God. Well, the answer is no to both of those. We, you could ask God for something 24 hours a day, six days a week, every second of every day, and it will still not outdo his power. God works in human hearts in, in, in unseen and mysterious ways. I'm going to go out on limb and say that most of us, if not all believers, can attest to this statement. We've all felt things in our heart that we couldn't explain. We've had miracles in our lives that we couldn't see the source of it. You hear the cliche all the time. God works in mysterious ways. I would say, though, because I, I am a personal witness to this, that God sometimes works in hearts in seen and very obvious ways. And if you know my testimony, it was fairly obvious. It wasn't a mysterious way. It was an obvious way that God changed my heart and changed my life. Self-consistent power. God's power works in perfect conformity with all of his other attributes. And I want to repeat that. Because this is very important for people to understand. God's power works in perfect conformity with all of his other attributes. As we saw in the introduction to the attributes of God, all of God's attributes constantly and continually work together. And they do that perfectly. There, there is no attribute that is stronger than any of the others. And also we touched on in the introduction, all of God's attributes, the 15, are all intertwined. And you cannot break one away from the other if you tried to cut it with the sharpest utensil. You, you would not be able to penetrate it. And you can't take one of God's attributes. Once you take one, it's a package deal. You get them all. God's attributes are not a la carte. It's all one package. <clears throat> Excuse me. Due to God's nature, there are certain things he cannot do. God cannot act inconsistently with his holiness, love, immu immutability, or other qualities. That's really important. I want to repeat that. God cannot act inconsistently with his holiness, love, immutability, or other qualities or attributes. This is not an ontological limitation of God's power. Rather, it demonstrates the boundless nature of each of his attributes. So let's just... Put the cards on the table. We're going to touch on immutability of God next week. He cannot change. He cannot lie. Okay? People need to understand that. God does not change. He is the same today, yesterday, tomorrow, forever. And now we're going to go over some study questions. Question one. Even the power that Satan possesses comes from God. True or false? 
We went over that earlier and I emphasized it. So hopefully you paid attention. The answer is true. Even the power that Satan possesses come from God. True. We saw this earlier in the first session titled uh, section titled Infinite Power. This very fact should help people break away from fear of Satan. Our mighty God is infinitely more powerful than Satan. And that should give us tremendous comfort. We've touched on this in previous weeks as well. So take comfort in knowing even God gave Satan his power. It came from God. All things come from God. Not just some, not just most. All things come from God. Even Satan's power. God's omnipotence works most closely with his A. Sovereignty B. Omnipresence C. Omniscience D. All the above And the answer is all the above. Hopefully you answered all the above. I'll be honest with you because you knew the answer. When I was in school, one, my go-to, if I wasn't sure, was to select all the above or if that wasn't there and it was none of the above. But let's reread that. God's omnipotence works most closely with all of his other attributes. In the last section, titled Self-Consistent Power, we read God's power works in perfect conformity with all of his other attributes, not some, not one, not a couple, all of his other attributes. And like I said before, not one, not one other, not some, not a few, but all of his other attributes. And I believe it's absolutely vital to our faith that we all believe this fact that all his attributes work together you think about us as humans nobody is absolutely a superstar 100 percent perfect in everything we all have our weaknesses in our personalities in our personal attributes but God all his attributes work in harmony Number three, because God is omnipotent, all of the following are true except, and this is a, every week we have a difficult question. This was definitely a very tough one. God's power is incomprehensible. God's power is like ours, but quantitatively greater. God's power influences human choices. God's power is present everywhere in the same degree. Now, what do you think? That is a very tough question. I felt it was B. God's power is like ours, but quantitatively greater. Every week, like I said, there is at least one question that is really tough to answer. Even though power is a communicable attribute from God, that does not mean that God's power is like ours or our power is like God's. And unfortunately, there is a good amount of false teaching and preaching out there with the message of being little gods. I, 
I would sincerely urge everyone to stay clear of such teaching and preaching. If you start hearing phrases like God's DNA, we're little gods, they're going to throw out at you. When dogs procreate, what comes out of it? A dog. So when God created, what must have come out was a little God. No, hogwash. Hogwash. So stay very clear of that teaching. Question four. Last question. Since God is all-powerful and can do whatever he pleases, he is free to change his mind with respect to who will be saved. True or false? And I'll repeat that. Since God is all-powerful and can do whatever he pleases, he is free to change his mind with respect to who will be saved. And the answer is false. We may not have touched on this exact question in the section titled Self-Consistent Power, where we saw that God cannot act inconsistently with his holiness, love, immutability, or other qualities. Now, just like anything, if we're ever in doubt, we turn to Scripture for guidance and answers. Because hopefully, like me, you believe that Scripture is the infallible living Word of God. So Romans chapter 11, verse 29 definitely clarifies this answer by stating, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. The Good News Translation puts it this way. For God does not change his mind about whom he chooses and blesses. Now the obvious question, whether you're joining me now or you view this and hear this later, let's repeat the Good News Translation. For God does not change his mind about whom he chooses and blesses. The question I have for you out there watching this, listen to this, whatever time you do, has he chosen you? I heard you. When that, you know, don't wait for that invitation at church, that altar call. Make that decision. Turn your life over to Christ. Repent of your sins. Believe that he's the son of God, that he died and rose again on the third day. He died for our sins. Then you'll be able to say, yes, he chose me because he does not change his mind about whom he chooses and blesses. Now for, as we close, some Bible study and discussion questions. And again, I urge everyone, keep a journal when you're, doing the, when you're going through these questions. And, you know, review these questions by yourself, you know, some quiet time with God, but also... Review them with friends, family, church family, in a group. Consider how any power that you possess has been delegated to you from God. How should this affect your relationships with others, whether in the workplace, the family, or among friends? Very deep, deep question right there to start off with. Have you known individuals 
who have exhibited extreme hostility towards the gospel. I think we all can <laughs> we can all answer that a big yes. How can a consideration of God's omnipotence provide encouragement when you pray for or witness to them? How should knowing that every moment of your existence is dependent on God's influence or on, on how God influence how you spend your time? How should this bring humility to life's pursuits? Another very deep question. Does God's omnipotence in and of itself provide you comfort? Or is it only in conjunction with his other attributes? Does this say anything about the benefits or dangers of elevating one of his one aspect of his character to the exclusion of others? Awesome questions to meditate, study on. <clears throat> Excuse me. I would love to hear and see people's comments about these questions and your progress through this study. And as I mentioned before, next Saturday, Saturday, March 11th at 9.30 Central Time, we'll be discussing the immutability of God, the fact that he is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forever. And I want to thank everyone for joining us. I want to thank everyone who's going to watch this and listen to this later. As always, it's been my pleasure uh, to bring you God's attributes. I know it's been extremely beneficial to me. I pray it's been even just slightly beneficial to you. But it's my hope that it's been a huge benefit to you. And I'll close us out in prayer. Heavenly Father, as always, it is an extreme pleasure to spend time deep in your word <clears throat> as we look at and dissect your awesome attributes. And today, God, you are all-powerful. You are om omnipotent. There is no one, no being stronger, more powerful than you, Father. And we, we rely on your power. Father, we cannot exist with your, without your omnipotence. And Father, I pray for everyone going through hard times right now that that they're touched by your word, that they see and feel your omnipotence, Father. Father, I pray that you, the broken and the lost are lifted up by your omnipotence, Father. There are so many broken people out there, Father. I pray that your omnipotence touches them. Father, I pray that everyone has a safe and wonderful week. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone said amen. So again, I thank everyone for joining us. If you have any questions or comments, again, you can reach out to me, pastorjim.tcorc at gmail.com and again it's my pleasure to bring you the attributes of God please join us next week as we look at the immutability of God he never changes have a wonderful rest of your week weekend everybody and God bless <laughs>